Welcome to our review on liquid pressure. Just as we've seen with gases, when they're in a container of any form and they collide with the surface, they produce this pressure. Same thing is true with our liquids. So for example, water will exert a liquid pressure. Because the water molecules are close together and they're moving, when they collide with each other, the container and anything else we've placed in the water, then we end up generating this pressure. And liquid pressure acts in all directions. When we consider how pressure changes with the depth, then the further down you go, the greater the pressure will be. And the reason for that is that the further down you are, the more particles there are above you pushing down. So you can illustrate this in a couple of ways. On the left, we've got one of the very simple experiments you can do. If you put a few holes up the side of a bottle and fill it with water, then the hole at the very bottom will actually shoot the water a greater horizontal distance because it has a greater pressure compared to the one at the top because there's more particles pushing down on it. Alternatively, if you happen to be a scuba diver, then if you blow bubble rings under water, as they start to ascend, then the bubble ring expands because as it goes closer to the surface, the pressure is decreasing and therefore the gas particles can spread out more. We should also bear in mind that liquid pressure varies with the different liquids and it's down to their density. So the denser the liquid, the greater the pressure exerted at an equal depth. So if we've got water and a liquid that's denser than water, then at the same depth, that material that's denser than water will have a greater pressure. And again, this is down to the fact that there is a greater weight of liquid pushing down in the denser liquid than in our water. What we need to be able to do next is to carry out a calculation. Good news. This is one of those formulas that's included on the formula sheet in your physics exam. So remember, flip over that additional piece of paper on your desk once you're in there because it has some handy little formulas you didn't have to memorize. So the formula there is pressure is the height of the column in meters times the density of the liquid times by gravitational field strength. So the kind of question we could get is calculate the pressure at the bottom of a column of liquid of height 50 centimeters Density of the liquid is 1,200 kilograms per meters cubed, and the gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. First thing we should always do is highlight, circle, underline, jot down those key numbers that we're going to be using in our calculation. So I've highlighted them in red for you there in the question. Next thing to do is double check the units. So the density is absolutely fine, the field strength is fine. The only thing that's got different units to what we need is the height, because in the question they've given it to us in centimeters, but the standard units are always meters. So we've got to convert centimeters to meters, which we do by dividing by 100. So to calculate the pressure, it's the height of the column times the density times G. So that would be 50 divided by 100 to get it into meters times by 1200 times by 10 which gives us our answer of 6,000 pascals. And remember to write down all of your working so that even if you have a calculator fail in the exam, you can still pick up several marks. Never just write down the answer, even if you think it's the easiest calculation in the world, because in that situation of being in your real GCSE exam, it's really easy to make really stupid mistakes. The last thing to consider is what we've looked at there is just the liquid pressure. But obviously, we've also got atmospheric pressure as well that acts on these objects. So if we wanted to know the total pressure, we'd have to do liquid pressure plus atmospheric pressure. Hopefully, at the end of this video, you can apply the equation for pressure in liquid at a particular depth. You can explain why the pressure in a liquid varies with depth. You can explain why the pressure in liquid varies with density, and you can calculate differences in pressure at different depths in a liquid.